Every day in York Region, the grounds of Buttonville Public School have become Kubla Khan's Winter Palace, and these grade four students, acting as Khan's governors for the day, are taking part in Khan's annual winter training. Working in teams, the governors move about the grounds, locating specially created activity cards and solving mathematical problems. If the royal sailors who made 810 silk flags in an hour, and how, many, how, many, how, many, how many did they manage to take each okay, minute? Let's see, I want to have 60 is a 90. Let's see. What symbol? The next. Um, oh, I got this one. On the face. Nine. Nine. Have you read it out loud? Yeah. Uh, not out loud in my mind. Okay. Okay. Why don't why don't one of why doesn't one of us read it out loud? It is believed that the cold waters of Yatis River, yes. Yats River run throughout the Khan's vast emperor as quickly as a mail carrier. Brainstorm at least three ways that you could figure out just how fast that mighty river runs. All right. Estimate Stop there. Okay. Stop there. Now look behind you. Behind me. Okay. Stand up. Okay. What lies beyond that first, pretend it's a wall. Okay. What, what lies? A river. A river. Mm-hmm. Pretend that that is the river we're speaking of here. Mm-hmm. Okay. You and your group need to brainstorm three ways that you could figure out how fast it runs. Be inventive. Be creative. Doesn't okay. have to be oh, mathematical per se. Okay, put a twig on the bottom. Sure. Sure. But it involved the, the, the language, the reading of the cards, the understanding of the questions, and the, the discussing of the questions and the strategies um, between the team members. It's this one tall, so you have to divide it um, 15 years. How many steps go? So it's this one. Is there anything they could do here to count or measure something and then do something with the horses or chariots, do you think? Okay, if we have one on every brick, yeah. like every brick, they have the horse tied up on the whole wall, mm. they have to count their bricks. Mm. Well, let's just make it like three rows. There's a horse tied to three rows on okay, every brick. Three every, like three rows, like one, two, three. Yeah. And on every brick, there's a horse tied up. Okay. Yeah. Do that, and then. Do that. And then they have and to count it. all the bricks. Yeah. Yeah. And then. All these bricks. <laughs> no, no, just not three, not rows, bricks, like three rows. And all the. Like, do that count on your paper on it first. And then, yeah. okay. Times three. Well, I think we know that that kids learn best when they when they see connections to their outside world when it's meaningful and. Um, I think that uh, any, any chance, any opportunity that you have to connect your curriculum to the outdoors, to the environment, it's invaluable. The kids love it. They love being outside. Uh, it gives them the chance to be free and talk with a normal voice and, um, and interact with one another. Um, I think those are all really positive elements of going The outdoors. things I've found with working with students in the schoolyard is that they don't realize that they've been doing math. They'll later on remember that on that sheet they had their math questions, but they were moving around and the strategies of working together, traveling together, solving problems together worked well in this group. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a different forum for doing work that, that can be used much more. And, um, and it allows students with different abilities to shine, those that uh, normally are not maybe as good, you know, working at mm -hmm. desks or mm -hmm. working in groups. It's a different situation. It's a new playing field that they can sometimes excel at. And, so it evens out their, their learning styles or their abilities with other students as well. And the map reading, or just <clears throat> forcing them to move around the schoolyard, following the map to a certain mm -hmm. location, is an application of what, what's called trivia orienteering, where they have to go to a spot and they answer a question by being at that spot.
Trivia and team score orienteering is the first stage of a five-part mathematics and orienteering unit developed by Arnis. Using a map of the school grounds, the objectives of this activity are to plan a team strategy to visit a number of points on the map, in this case Kublai Khan's governors attempting to complete Khan's winter training, find specific points on a map, like the Khan's activity centers, and complete arithmetic operations, like double divisor division. How did you know what, you, what route you were going to take? Uh, we, we just look at our starting point, mm -hmm. and we just look at whatever the one's close to. Yeah, yeah. we take the closest You started one at the start, yeah. and you, we so. started at the portable. You started at the portable, and then you, and then you went to the closest one? Yeah, yeah. which was the diamond, the baseball diamond. And then we went down to the walkway down there. Yeah, and then we went to the fence, uh -huh. then the yeah. soccer post, and then the fire hydrant. No, that, that pole. Yeah. yeah. And then this, um, where the school is. And then Fire, the, no, the, the flag <laughs> pole in the front of the school, the hydrant right there, and now we're and here. In the park. Yeah, yeah. How do you know where to find where you are in this map? What well, are you looking for on the map? Figure it out. These, all these places are circled. But how do you know where they are on this whole schoolyard? How can you figure that out? Well, we use our map to give us a clue of what the area looks like. We know this area pretty well. Okay, and does, does the legend help at all? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Really helpful. So are you, do you have one more to go? Yep. yep. Okay, good luck. Good luck. Teachers are concerned about control. What will happen to their class if they're spread out all over the schoolyard? Are they learning something? And I think the more teachers do it with little bits of activities at a time, they realize that the students do come back. The principal realizes that, okay, they are doing some work out there. And the students um, just learn the, the uh, different uh, strategies and, and routines of going out, coming back, and doing their work. The expectation is that they're still going to have to get that work in and, and process it and learn something from it. It requires a lot of planning, I think, on, on the part of the teacher mm -hmm. um, in order for that kind of an activity to work and to work well. Uh, you really have to set guidelines and expectations. You have to practice those things. You have to get them comfortable with routines outside. They're comfortable with routines inside, but yeah. unless you do actively this kind of thing outside, it, it, it is a free-for-all unless it's very yeah. um, carefully planned. The teams work within a time limit, and a scoring system is established. Student-created bonus questions are awarded extra points. So are you guys, are you guys finished? Yeah. What are you doing right now? Making more questions. Making up your questions. So what's your question? Okay. Uh, how many people and how many bricks did this, did they each have to finish this wall before we reach you? And, and you put the total of the bricks. Yeah. Now how do you think you're going to have to figure that one out? Well, we counted uh, this way, the bricks, and it was 85. Yeah. And we and counted this way, it was uh, 105. So then how do you figure out how many bricks there are? Well, mm. you, you times um, 105 by, I don't know, 85, five. and that gives you your, to your total. And then you think how many people need to finish all that off. And how many bricks would they each have to carry? Yeah.